Today I am showing you how to make fresh homemade ravioli stuffed with your filling of choice. This one's butternut squash and you're gonna love it. Yes, hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my virgin kitchen. I hope you're well. Uh, we're doing this homemade ravioli, so we're making our own pasta from scratch. It is a lot easier uh, than it sounds. I get a lot of requests uh, for homemade pasta. Uh, chicken ravioli requests came in, but I've done quite a lot of chicken recently. Plus we've got quite a lot of veggies watching too, so uh, a really nice butternut squash spinach ricotta filling. Let's do it. Homemade pasta, so you can do this step uh, in a food process if you want, just chuck the flour and the eggs together, but we're gonna do it on our countertop. Wedding ring's coming off. So this is um, 300 grams of zero zero grade flour. That's like double secret agent, isn't it? Double O flour. Oh no! Oh, I just dropped one of my eggs. I put that egg in the middle there. It's kind of like making a fried egg on your countertop. Make sure it's clean. Other egg. There we go, it's all clean. Might as well use it, right? So, Mrs. Barry's filming for the vlog, by the way, if you're wondering uh, what's going on. Uh, so we're just gonna use a spoon uh, to lift that flour, just initially, but you are gonna have to get your hands in there, which is why the food processor method, you know, or, or a mixing bowl, but I like to really knead it together, which we're gonna do uh, in just a jiffy. Let's get our hands in there. This is nice. So just try and bring it all the flour together first of all, so that you don't get all like random bits spraying out. And it is actually starting, you can feel it in your hands. I feel it in my fingers. So do keep getting it in a little bit of flour if you need, but it will be a little tougher uh, than standard bread dough, but you just want to get it as smooth as you can. As you get towards the end, any sort of niggly bits that are just not sticking to it, you just brush those to one side and give it one final push. There we go, happy with that. It doesn't look like much, but trust me, this will be a lot of pasta. Clean down your surface as quick as you can, otherwise it will stick and be really hard to get off, so that's what I've done. Uh, so we've got our dough here and some cling film. Now, I'm rubbish with getting cling film off the roll, so Mrs. Barry's gonna come in and help do that. Don't touch it. Every time you touch cling film, you end up like with only half a roll or whatever. You just, yeah. you can never get a straight bit. Thanks, mate. You're welcome. <laughs> so, cling film over the pasta, just roll it all around like that. Doesn't really matter if you double bag it, or whatever you call it. Just make sure it's completely covered. And now we put it in our fridge for half an hour. So it's in the fridge and that is the pasta made. Apart from rolling it out, congratulations, you've just made pasta. Now let's work on our filling. All right. Here's a butternut squash. So all we're gonna do is uh, take the nipply bit off the top and then just peel the skin off. Alrighty. So we wanna scoop this flesh out of the bum of it. <laughs> it's very soft, so it does come out to so get all the seeds out of it. There we go, so it kind of looks like a big old microphone. Uh, so we're just gonna have it, have it again, have it again, okay? So you've got them around about this thickness, and then we just go into chunks. These cubes will be too big for our ravioli, but what we wanna do is get them this size so they'll just cook a little quicker in the oven. Butternut squash, drizzling in it olive oil, good grind of black pepper, salt on top as well, and a shaken nutmeg just to give it a bit of an autumnal vibe. The weather's changing guys, it's getting cold again. I missed the summer already. And then we're gonna put this in the oven to roast and caramelize up. It's gonna add so much flavor to this ravioli. All right, so this is our medium frying pan. We're just gonna warm it up. There's no oil in there at the moment, okay? And what we're gonna do is just tip in our pine nuts. Ooh, get those in here. These are just pine nuts that you get in the supermarket because we're gonna toast these up. And for some reason, that noise has summoned the pugs. We just realised uh, why the dogs decided to summon themselves, right? It sounds like when their dog biscuits hit their dog bowl. Yeah, yeah, they're just like, hello. Here they are. All right. So this has only been about a minute in the pan and you can see they're starting to toast, so do uh, move them around pretty frequently. It's smelling so good in here. Very piney. All right. Like one of those car air fresheners. The whole filling is optional, so if you don't like nuts, do not put nuts in it. So they're toasted, just gonna push those into a ramekin, putting our pan back on there, and I'm just gonna dump in, boom. Woohoo! A handful of spinach. There's no oil in it again. The pan's already hot, so it'll wilt and shrivel up. Popeye would be proud. There we go, so 90 seconds later, it's all shriveled up. Don't worry about the stalks on there either, because it's all gonna get whizzed together. So we'll just push that. Again, just to chill out and cool down. We're gonna use this pan one more time for our mushrooms. All right, teeny bit of oil going in the pan this time, and the mushrooms are not going in the ravioli, but they could. This is just a nice to serve alongside, and we're making advantage uh, of the heat in this pan already. So we're just gonna fry up uh, these chestnut mushrooms, soften them up really nice alongside it. There we go, mushrooms out of the pan to be drained on some kitchen towel, and we'll use them to finish the dish. Straight from the oven, our butternut squash, lovely and charred, smelling amazing with that nutmeg. 
All right, so in goes our butternut squash. I'm only using half of that squash, by the way. Uh, the rest I'm gonna have for lunch. Uh, use a full squash if you're gonna make a lot of ravioli, but half is fine. Our wilted spinach, and then the pine nuts. So these are toasted, uh, about a tablespoon, as I say. So much flavor in this bowl, let's whiz it together. And there we go. Looking rather stonking indeed. So, spooning that filling into a big old bowl. So I'm just gonna put in about two tablespoons-ish, just wing it, maybe about half a tub in total of ricotta cheese, but of course uh, you could mix this up. You could use feta cheese if you like as well, or cottage cheese. You can see that's giving it a bit more of a creamy vibe, but it's also gonna uh, solidify it slightly more, make it a bit more butch when we stack it in our ravioli. So folks, uh, I've just quartered up the pasta dough, as you can see right there. The rest is there to one side. We'll put that out the way. We're gonna flour this slightly. we we'll just have a little of your pasta flour to one side. Just get it coated in it a little bit. Maybe squish it into like a disc shape just to help it. And the pasta machine is on the widest setting, okay? So we just stick it in, and then we just wind it through like that. You can see? That's, that is at the thickest setting. We're gonna go through again. Alrighty, so it's getting there. Uh, Mrs. Barry's helping me hold down because normally this would have a clamp, uh, but we uh, have lost it. So <laughs> we're gonna get a new pasta machine, but we're just going down uh, one notch at a time. All right, final roll. And there we go, folks. One sheet of pasta. Now we can get a lot of ravioli just out of that. For your pasta, there's two different steps you can do. So you can uh, slice a strip uh, like so. Put your filling in one side lift it over and then crimp around with a fork to seal. Well, we're gonna do something very similar to that. So grab yourself uh, a cookie cutter uh, like this. Give it a good old twist to make sure you've cut the circle fully. Okay, so you've got yourself a nice circle there. We'll do another, all right. So we're just gonna get a teaspoon of our filling in the middle, heap it up like that. We'll use the other circle in just a minute, but this is some water. We're just gonna dampen uh, the edges. This is gonna sort of help it stick kind of like a glue. So we get our other disc, place it on top. Now start, try and sort of create the outline with your finger and thumb all the way so the filling stays in the middle. And then push the two together so the water sticks it. Then just crimp the edges with your fork. And there we go, our ravioli is done. Repeat that step over and over. And there we are, a nice sheet of ravioli. You're gonna make at least 50 ravioli with this whole recipe and have tons of filling left, by the way. Mrs. Barry actually helped me with some of those steps, didn't you? I did. Um, the great thing about this being fresh pasta is it's gonna cook in about three or four minutes. Get the pan of water up to a steady simmer, okay? Um, if you do it too over bubbly, the ravioli will just, it will it'll just out. split. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're just bringing that down to a nice steady simmer. Let's get the ravioli in there. Just gonna place them in one at a time. There we go. And remember not to overfill your pan too, so do it in batches. Alrighty, you can see they're nice and pillowy. I'm gonna just drain these off and shove them into one of the kids' breakfast bowls, because I'm running out of props today. But it is super delicate, folks. It's gonna taste gorgeous. It's time to serve it up now. So here we go. Down goes that ravioli. There we go. A Little bit of rocket salad there. Some of those chestnut mushrooms that we uh, cooked up earlier. Remember, you could shove that in the ravioli if you like, ravioli. Teeny drizzle of olive oil. You can use chili oil, that'd be awesome, actually. Bit of pepper. And a great inn of Parmesan on top. Oh, my mind is telling me no. Check that out, folks. Making it rain with Parmesan. Lush. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. You like That's it? Good. I really like it. There's a real yeah. balance, isn't there, of flavours? Yeah, like... you can taste the sweetness of the butternut squash and the ricotta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then like the, the pepper and cheese that you sprinkled on top. Oh, it's delicious. So remember, I'm self-taught, so now it's your turn. Have a go, uh, send us a picture, um, follow us on social media as well for all the behind the scenes bits and bobs and our spin-off channel uh, for that. Uh, remember to subscribe for regular recipe videos. Yes, uh, Mrs. Tasty. Barry and I do uh, two a week and then a fun day on a Sunday, but I think this is gonna be our lunch. So yes. please give it a go, put your own spin on it. Uh, and good luck. We'll see you next time. I'm just gonna... Bye. Bye.